Welcome to the Adu Show. If you are watching or streaming this episode, thank you so much for tuning in. Today, I have my favorite guest co-host and my favorite guest stopping by the show. You just heard some of his voice. He just gave it away. He's just so special. He just doesn't want to... Like, <laughs> just shut up. <laughs> Damn, man. Help me welcome my guest co-host for this evening, because this is no more daytime. To, yes, this is daytime television talk show. My boy, Ethan Pierce, is guest co-hosted, yeah. boy. Yeah. He just chilling with me, got my guy. And look, That's I me. said the last time it was going to e- either be you or the other Ethan that stops by. But you were the one that stopped by first. So you get you you get you get more love. Sorry to yeah. the other Ethan. No, I love the other Ethan. The other Ethan's cool. You'll see him again. The, this this Ethan's chill. He's just hanging out with me for the hour, or maybe thirty minutes. Never know how long the show will last. Just never know. How you doing, my guy? Fantastic. I'm ready to answer these questions. I'm ready to, to do the things I gotta do. You know me. Things that I gotta do, I do them. Cause he's in a duel. I don't get the. I, I'm trying to make a joke out of it. I'm so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, I was trying to do something stupid, but it ain't gonna happen. All right, let's just get into this topic for today. <laughs> well, there's always a raging debate happening around the around the country. Specifically, it's all about grocery store etiquette. For instance. When you go to the supermarket, is it really that hard for you to return your shopping cart to its proper place instead of just leaving it in the parking lot? So, you guys, what is it about grocery stores that make people behave crazy? I tell you, man, I don't know. Just... You know what, dude? Thinking of this topic, I worked at I worked at Walmart during the summertime when I'm on break and that kind of thing. You look and like the guy who wor- who worked. <laughs> I no, normally I like, I like stock shelves, right? Sometimes they make, they make us go outside, like I'm um, pulling the carts sometimes to loan people. And I will tell you what, I have a lot more respect for people that return the shopping carts than ever because having a bunch of people that just you know just just they kind of like they push it away from their car, like they, they put their bags in and they just push the carts somewhere else. Like they don't put it anywhere; they just push it somewhere. Oh my God! The absolute worst people I've I've known. Do you know, I don't even know? But do you know how how like do you know the problems that that simple thing? That's just a simple problem get, that can be resolved in seconds. The one Absolutely. thing that people don't know how to do. Grocery store etiquette, everybody. Please just put the shopping carts back into its rightful place. Uh, look, these these guys. I'm talking about me here as well. They, they, like, y'all making their the, the, the work harder. I'll make the work harder. Yeah. No, no, wait, back, back to the topic. I will tell you what. There's a, there's like a big thing I know about. It's like some kind of psychological like question of the, the, the shopping cart, like ultimatum. Yeah. You return, you gain nothing by putting it back. You also don't lose anything either. But it's like, what do you really lose if you don't put the shopping cart back? For me, it's it's like your moral dignity. I think you lose <laughs> if you don't put the shopping cart back. Honestly, because it's like it's like it's like a you lose you lose like, respect for the people who work at Walmart, Target, every single what do you call it franchises? I don't know. Look, bro, this is your community. You're treating the community in a disrespectful way. Get yourself okay. together. It's a pain. That's what I'm saying. You see That's what, what I'm I saying did? to do. See the next the next guest we're we're having on we're talking about I'm spoiling it right now, we're talking about something that has to deal with pain. Huh? See, it's pain for people who have to deal with your ugly grocery store etiquette. Now, like for real though, just yo, just please, just put the shopping shopping cart back. I mean, that, I know that's back, not the only please. thing. The items that are on the shelves is there. If there's an item on the shelf and you know that there's someone stocking. I'm talking about me here right now. Don't put it all the way where the toothbrushes are. Something flew my eye. Don't put it all the way over there. Put it right back where you saw the stalker stock the thing. Are you making it all work too hard for this stuff? Working 12 hours. No, I think something flew in my eye right now. I think that was meant to be like, dude, shut up. 
I think that's what it was. No, nah, like for real though. Like I, I and y'all be lazy too. Y'all, mm, y'all think the world revolves around you. It ain't. Don't. It won't. Don't. It won't ever. Literally, we just made our point. Just please, just don't make other people's jobs harder than it already has to be. It might not even be hard to. It might not even be hard to. It might not be hard from your perspective as a customer. However, you just never know how much time and work it took. Improve, everybody. All right. Let's see. Uh, all right, next one. One single mom recently decided that any kid that is coming to her twin's fifth birthday party will have to pay a cover charge. According to the Daily Mail, the mom invited 60 of her children's classmates to the party and plans to collect $10 per child at the door. It's a, wow, it's a door charge. Now, rumor reportedly assisted that all the money will go towards the party's expenses and that each kid will get a gift on the way out. While many parents feel like it's the height of rudeness to charge per child, other parents think it's a great idea and are considering doing the same thing. So you guys, would you charge at your child's party? Or if you had a child? You know what, dude? Now that you bring it up, I do think that's also a good idea. Because it's not really charging the kid. It's kind of charging the parent. Because 60 kids, bro, that's a mess. 60, yeah, 60 kids. Anything, kids. Is too much. 60 kids, bro. You know what those muggles can do, bro? They run around and shit, breaking <laughs> everything. Dude, like, it's like, you know, you know how expensive parties are to, to, to take make you buy the food, you buy the drinks, you buy, like, equipment you need. But, it's, but it, I'm saying it's a lot of money. And ten dollars per chart per kid. That's about six hundred bucks, I think, total. It'd be six thousand. I think six hundred. <laughs> Hold up, run the math. Where's my phone at. Wait a minute. You're you're calculating sixty children per what? For ten dollars. So you put you put it into a calculator, right? Oh now, yeah, right? that's sixty children. I can barely deal with ten. That's just me. That's the the it's other 600 person. Six hundred bucks total. For the whole, if every, if every kid comes, it'd be six hundred bucks total. Okay, that's you know stupid. It, that's fair because they're also getting it's covering if they, if they break anything, right? I just did the math on my on my computer, bro. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you take those two zeros. Okay, I got you. I got you. I got you. And you also, you also think about it. Like, Keep going. You're also getting like, like a little goodie bag on the way out, bro. Like parties are parties are not free, and I think it's not like covering like it's, it's, the kid's not paying the ten dollars. No. But it's it's shit. a child's birthday party though. I've never been to a child's birthday party where you where you have to pay. For uh, if if it's some, if it's somebody our age, I understand that because well sometimes sometimes I sometimes understand that depending on the situation. Now if it's like a dress up theme type of thing and you gotta pay, yeah I'll pay. If we're going bowling and I gotta pay my own thing and I choose to come then yes i will pay but uh for a child's birthday party i've never been to a child's birthday party in the history of time even with my parents they've never have told me from what i remember that it's they like ever paid kids, bro not happening yet it's like 60 kids if every kid comes bro that's 60 little i know that's like, two classrooms around. that's two yeah, elementary that's two class <laughs> dude that's all that's the whole entire school almost in some place that's the, that's the entire like class Bro, you got 60 little kids running around and you're in your house and outside, bro, you're making a mess. And Bruh, your parents come in there too. But you and have to be house. really loyal for you to invest. I mean, for you to have 60 kids over your house, you got to have a bigger house for that. Um, And I know that's not the only thing that should be the main topic we should be targeting. I believe it's also like what, like, is charging the child really necessary, honestly? And I and I and I know it said that it's going towards the expenses. Am I reading this right or am I tripping? If I'm paying you ten dollars, I really hope it kind of goes above and beyond the quote unquote ordinary kids' birthday party. Instead of like smack, you know, having some balloons and smacking some label that says "Happy Birthday" on the wall, 
And, you know, all all kids really want is birth. Like, think of the kids. Just, you know, I love. Look, you say what say what you want. I like kids. I love kids. Say what you want. Because I know I've said stuff. Yo, I said stuff on the show that everybody was like, you don't want to have kids. and all. Yeah, I don't want to have kids. But it's different when you're dealing with them for only a few hours. And when they leave, it's like, huh. Kids, if you're watching this, I love y'all still, though. But it can be hectic at times. I think anybody can, even adults. Kids break, break, kids break everything, bro. Kids but, break, break everything. But kids, but kids they they run crazy. around the house, bro. They, they see a vase. That, that thing's going on the ground. They smack <laughs> that. And they carry the smithereens. <laughs> they, they run around the house. They run up the stairs, run up the, the, on the carpet. They, they, they bring money to the house, bro. Kids are a mess. Right. <laughs> Ten dollars per kid. It's like yeah, a little goodie bag. And if you break anything, it's already covered for. That's a that's fine in my opinion, you know. <laughs> Dude, if if, if, it, if it, so it's it's because it's, it's sixty kids, right? If it was like ten to five kids, I I'd be like, it's fine, you know. What, what can ten kids do? This is two full classrooms, bro. This is two classrooms. They be causing them some absolute mayhem. You will not be able to think the next like what two hours of your life. <laughs> two. You're hearing kids screaming, bro. That, that stuff gets in your ears, ain't never coming out ever again. <laughs> two it's full, more a mess. Two full elementary public school classrooms, 60 kids. Two man. full classrooms, bro. Two I remember full those days so badly. I, man, dude, I love those days. I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes, sometimes, some days, some days, some days, sometimes, sometimes. It was cool. <laughs> dude, I- <laughs> No, because I'm saying, like, I, everybody I talk to you, right? Everybody says, yeah, I hated it. I went to school, middle school, bro. It was the worst years of my life, like, for everybody. Or, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was the last thing we talked about when you were on the show. Middle school is the worst, bro. Every kid there is, like, socially awkward, raging hormones, bro. Every kid does not know who they even are, bro. Raging like, hormones. It, I don't know. It's, like, I don't know, teenage boys. I don't know how that old. Like, middle school's, like, 13, 15, 14. 15. Yeah, yeah, you're about right. I'm about right. Yeah. I'll tell you what, man. Middle school, bro. One thing that made middle school tolerable for me was, was music class. That was really it. Everything else just kind of sucked. Not gonna lie. Everybody but, was everybody. Everybody there was a for no reason because they had to one up everybody else. Everybody was just a bro for no reason. You, you would walk into a classroom and somebody already clowning your ass. Like I just I just, I, I just walked into the room. I, I've said nothing and you're already on me. You're already on my case. You're like writing on your script. You're writing on like these bullet points. You know. Oh. Uh, raggedy ass shoes, raggedy ass teeth, raggedy ass t-shirt. Bro, I walked into that was room. you. No, that was not me. <laughs> but I'm saying, I mean, maybe people just do that. They like pull out their whole like fucking like iMac and have, like their like their PowerPoint done, you know, on why they don't like you, and it's meant to the teacher and the rest of the class. Not you though. Oh, oh, oh I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah. They run out bullet points, but they have like they have, like the, they have, like the sources. They cite the sources, the citations, MLA format. Chicago, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. those yeah, days. Right out. Those they days. Google Docs. You know, they have, they have those like days. View from, they have like a PowerPoint where it's every picture from you, every point of your life, and, it, and it's everything about the picture. They just clown your ass for for no reason, and every slide. It's like every. Why picture. would they allow that in a school, Ethan? What school did you? What? Why? Why? Who, no, what I'm school? just saying they, they didn't actually do that. But I'm just saying it's like they have like a PowerPoint of like every moment of your life written down and why. This moment was, you know, your, I don't know, stupid. Uh, it, you know, it's just, it's just like a whole like bullet point on why why you suck that day, and you just walked into the classroom. It's I don't know. No scores are the worst. You're gonna keep preaching that. Dude, middle school's middle school is the worst years of your life. I'm telling you, everyone I've talked to, it's middle school. Ah. They they remember it fondly, but they're like, oh, actually, school was, actually. I ain't gonna lie, Ethan, and mind you, we never, we didn't, re- we don't talk about this a lot. But you kind of are right, in a sense. I ain't gonna say in a sense, cause middle school was a, uh, eh, for me. I'm not gonna talk about on camera, cause I don't, I am not, I'm not exposing that. <laughs> but it was so bad, bro. It was, it was really horrible. <laughs> it was a whole movie. I wanna re. I, I don't even want to go live through it. I don't mind watching what? it. For, what, what, a bug's life? <laughs> you and these cartoons, boy, I'm going to punch you. 
all right, do it for the screen. You know, they, you know, see the screen, all right. No, let me come up there, boy. You know I'm going to come over, up there anyway. You're over there. I'm going to come, come up there you. anyway. You're going to what I do? Huh? Uh, what to call the police on this one? I do. Is that a threat? Is that a promise? What an outtake that was. <laughs> We're good on time, my guy. We entertained the people for like twenty minutes. Now we can complain that uh, orange is not my new favorite color. You like color orange? Why not? I'm just making something up to stall time. No, for, no, no, not make, not make me mad at you. The, the, the first two things are fun. You got my nerves a little bit. This, this, no, this orange thing, though, that's too far. I'm not convinced yet. Not convinced. Bro, the, everybody knows the best color of all time is, like, purple. It's the best color of all time. It's, you know, I don't want to see no orange, bro. Purple is the best color of all time. You know it for a fact. Whatever. Purple's the, purple's the best color. You know it. No, we're not done with this yet. Whatever. Oh, whatever, man. Whatever. You know, purple, purple's the best color. Whatever. You know it is. That, that's a fact. Whatever. It's true. Try try deny it. CNN, Fox News, can't stop. You can't stop me. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'm exposed. I'm exposed to truth. That purple is the best color. This what's this orange? You see how about? he twists. What an opinion is to a truth. See, people like him like always like to twist stuff up. Oh, you know? whatever, bro. They, Purple's they, the best color. They, see, like he, like he did, like he did with the last show. He always change it to where I'm the criminal. See, I don't like purple. I don't like Shrek. It's always something with this. What? Guy. No, but no, no. It's never that back, bro. Like oh, this. No, run, run that back. What'd you say? And so. I think we're out of time for right now. Nah, we're not <laughs> out of time. We're not out of time. This is not done to do. When you come up here, you're, you think you're going to beat my ass. I'm going to lecture you on why Shrek's the best movie of all time. One of the greats. One of the greats, baby. DreamWorks Studios. One of the greats. Shrek 1. 2 and 4. Not 3, though. 3 is... Uh, 1, 2, 4. 1. 1, 2, 4. Shrek 1, 2, 4. Baby. Best trilogy. You're such a kid. Bro, no, I'm not. I'm giving <laughs> factual information. These aren't opinions anymore. Dude, this is like, this is facts. I, I have my sources. I don't need your sources. That's the last thing I need from you. Oh, uh, the Weather Channel. How about that? Purple Weather Channel. Uh, Shrek's best movie of all time, DreamWorks Studios. You know who made the Shrek movie? I'm DreamWorks about to pull Studios. the plug on that's this. All I had to say, that's all I had to say. DreamWorks Studios. Made by Ethan Pierce. <laughs> Stick around, everybody. There's more of the Do Show after this. Welcome back to the Do Show. My guest for today is somebody who caught my attention with his music. However, specifically with his latest release titled Pain, which is available now. Help me welcome... To the show, making his debut appearance on any talk show. I'm honored. Please welcome Jacob <laughs> Ed. Hey! <laughs> oh my gosh! I'm dude. loving it. Oh my gosh! This is a great start. I'm loving this already. See, we've been talking for yo. I for, so we were we've been talking. I'm forgetting that we are not recording. I said, hold on, hold on. This is so good. This is so good. I love this man. I love your energy. Oh my gosh! And I'm like, if the producers were here, they would be so mad at me. Like I told you, I'm like, <laughs> now I'm not doing my <laughs> job. I'm like, that's why you don't leave me alone with a bunch of people or with nobody. I should say, <laughs> there's nobody in the room. Just you, me, and a, 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 an iPhone 13 Pro. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> that's on both sides. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, bro. <laughs> nah, man. But <laughs> what's up? How you doing? What's good? I'm doing pretty good. I'm living my life, you know. What about you? <laughs> oh, just the regular. Just stop by, you yeah, know. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I gotta, I really gotta say, bro. I really gotta say, I, I gotta, dude. Uh, the way you approach music, like I told you, I just want to let everybody know you approach music in a way. 
where it's not always done and you have your own special unique sound to what you uh put down on paper and what you what just what you do with music and like i like from down broke to like 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 song and now pain and i'm just like dude you're very versatile like i told you in what you do and when i look at you i'm like this is the guy who raps really <laughs> like, like i can listen to pain and i'm again i i just told him i'm never judge a book by its cover i don't do that because i'm like this is the guy who like did the who did down broke i'm like that's this the same guy i'm like dude your genre is like what genres do you do i dude i'm i'm honestly so honored but i do every genre i'm i love everything i just i love all music i listen to everything and it makes me want to just do every little bit of music that i can dude, i just love it all oh my gosh i have such an admiration uh, admiration it's just such a hard yeah some people say i sound like 21 savage and then some people are like no, you're post Malone. No, I, I, <laughs> we can't ever fluctuate with that, dude. Oh, <laughs> they're, they're comparing your sound to post Malone and Twenty One Savage. The so Twenty One Savage. Broke, dude, my do, my down broke song was to like, was because I was like I look up Twenty One Savage. Like that's one of the people that I wanted to base it off of. I wanted to learn from him and try to make something as great with him, but with my twist on it. And like, that's what happened. And some people are like, dude, when I jam out to this, I feel like I'm listening to him, but it's just so good and like pain i want something deep and emotional like post malone some post malone songs you know and like i want something that kicks you in the heart a little bit yeah, 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 yeah. which is my next question what inspires you to make more music um honestly i went through like a drought like a back then like three years ago i went through like this really sad phase and i didn't know what to do with myself and i was like stuck and I just started making some music and it really started like hitting me in a different area where I could write my emotions, let it out to the people. If they don't listen to it or not, it's like me talking to myself. When I listen to my pain song, it's deep and emotional and I can listen to myself, like giving myself some motivation in the day or listen to myself, help myself up and get up and keep going, you know? Dude, look at his smile. I just like, yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just keep going, bro. Yeah, that's what we talking about tonight. Yeah, man. Come on, man. Make some notes for Jake. <laughs> nah, man. I just, <laughs> nah, no, nah, nah. I, I need that, man. You need that boost of energy. You know, we, we, yeah. all, we all, we, you know, we, you know, when you're working and you're doing this for real, and you just, you're, you're pushing and you're pushing. You really need that boost. I was literally, I, I, I watched this. I was watching this guy. I, one of my, one of one of the one of my favorite people to watch, his name's uh, Jacob Rotzi and his friend Caden, and they're both dancers, incredible incredible dancers, and they were just you know they I saw a promo or some video or something or like a photo, and they were like they boost each other up or somebody saying something about their friendship, and I'm like something about. And it was, I think it was another guy as well. I hope, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm just like, they're, they're, you need that energy. You need that yeah. boost of like. Dude, especially my days, like, some, it, it's like hard. Like, I wake up at four in the morning, dude, and just work out. And then I have to go to work. And then I go to school, college. And then it's just like having the energy to, to do this last little bit is literally like one of my favorite things to do. But it's the hardest. Like I said, I do it alone. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. so hard. <laughs> Nah, nah, but that's that's respect because I do a lot of stuff as hard as hard as it is to that for people to not believe. However, I do a lot of this on my own. I have people who work with me and work for me. However, it's just like, dude, it, I I can relate. I can relate on a deeper level with it when it comes to all this. It's you grinding. Respect, yeah. respect. <laughs> all right, yeah, <laughs> okay. My right, gosh, I gotta get myself together. <laughs> nah, man. But how, <laughs> how did you get your start? Okay, I'll, I'll, I, I, I bounce around. Okay, so when I first started, I had some money, so I spent a whole bunch of money on this mic stuff. I just, I spent overspent money on like, well, I didn't overspend, but all of it broke. Like, I didn't know how to use it, and it was really bad. My music at the beginning was horrible. I'll admit that. I, my, some people like it still, but in my opinion, I didn't like it, and. I accidentally broke it and I had to start using my cell phone and my earbuds. Pain was made on my cell phone. <laughs> and 
Yeah, it, it, it took a lot of editing. And when I did it on my cell phone, I had to teach myself how to mix perfectly on a computer. So I would record on my phone, send it to my computer, send it back to my phone, and it would I'd have to mix it so it wouldn't sound like you can hear any background noise, anything. And when I learned that, I finally moved on to like the the phone and then the mic on the phone. And then after that, now I'm back to the computer on a full setup again. And like now that I have everything wrapped up, I'm in a whole entire new area of like greatness. I don't know. It's just it's been a journey. <laughs> Dude, I am so like in a dream myself just listening to you talk i'm just like dude <laughs> if y'all haven't even checked out pain or bought it or streamed it or even listened to it please i am begging you like <sighs> like gosh you are missing out on something great like please just do yourself a favor a lot to me. do yourself yeah. a favor and go go listen to stream pain we're going to talk about that later in the show however i do i do want to ask you this when you write yeah. do you draw from real life experiences all the time if you listen to almost any of my songs they come from something in my real life that happens emotionally and i have to write in the moment if i write a song and i write half of it in the so like every day i feel somewhat different like today i'm really happy and then Tomorrow it's raining and I feel really sad. If I feel really sad and I don't finish the song and the next day comes, I won't feel that same way and I can't write it because it's not from the heart. I want to be able to write from what I feel. So down broke, like an example, if you listen to it, I was down broke. Like I was broke. I used to be homeless and I was depressed and sad. And that's what I was saying. Like I had an epiphany. I say like I had an epiphany and now I'm writing simply because it's coming from the heart and I know where I'm going now and I'm pushing, pushing my way. Same thing with pain. When I lay in bed, I feel cold. Like sometimes when I lay in bed, I feel cold and sad and dry. And I feel like I'm alone. And that's just how I felt. So I wrote about it. It's just all from here, you know? <laughs> Sounds crazy, but I don't know. I can't write unless it's from my heart. Unless it's about something with my family, with myself, anger. It all comes from someplace. Well, that's all the time we have for today. No, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I, you're... <laughs> Listen to me. You're... Dude, dude, you draw from your heart, bro. Your heart is where you need to draw from when you when it comes to... You keep doing what you're doing. You're doing the right thing, bro. You just... You, you know what you... You know what you yeah. want, and you... You, you you feel what you feel for a reason and the way you, the way you come come out on music is just it's incredible that's what i want people to feel too though like the reason i posted pain is because i want you to feel what i'm feeling you know my dreams are so scary for me like i am so afraid that i will fail because like i'm alone i'm doing this by myself I, like we're doing you're you you know how it feels like yeah i'm literally yeah. i said yes to you immediately because i'm not desperate but i want it so bad that i will do anything to get there and i'm scared i know? was desperate and to get you be? pain do <laughs> pain do let's talk about pain do pain <laughs> pain dude this re this really is an incredible release i was Dude, that's why. Yo, let me tell you something. True, true, true story. Right, right before we started taping, I literally the, the, uh, clicked on the video call on Instagram. I was like, "Hey, are you there?" Because I'm like, I don't want to miss this guy. Literally, you have been the. Uh, listen, I've been working. I've been doing tapings all day today, bro. I'm just like, you have been somebody that I've been looking forward to talk to since yesterday because I've been listening <laughs> to pain. I'm like, this guy is more incredible right now than even the song. I'm just like, gosh, bro, like, <laughs> don't even, bro. Don't even like yeah. the the way. You, and I know you work with little materials, but a little goes a long way. It does. It really it does. does. And, and I yeah. can't wait. I. My family tells me too, like, they're like, don't ever delete your old music. And I'm like, why? I want to delete it all. I want to restart. And then they're like, because if you get big one day, everyone's going to see where you came from. And then that's going to be inspiration to everyone. It's going to be like inspiration to the world that you can do it with just this, with just your phone, with just a computer, anything. I've been trying to preach yeah. that since day one. We've been doing this on an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Every taping, like I got, I got 
people editing and whatnot, but every ever since I started, I fall. Fuck. <laughs> no, I never done this. This is a, I'm a this is laptop. Yeah. Look, there's an iPhone see, right there. There's an iPhone <laughs> right there. That's all I got. <laughs> Gosh. Exactly. It's the grind. Dude, it, it's it's what you, what it's not only just what you can afford, but it's what you can do to make it. You strive and you push and you do your thing and you never stop because you just don't know where it's going to take you. And like I was telling my man Claudio, shout out to Claudio, is one of my favorite drummers. He was like I, I told I was like, you just never know who's watching. You never know who's yeah. tuning in. You never you just never know. And I don't care how many followers you have, I don't care how many subscribers you have. You don't will and we will never know who's watching you. And I'm just like, yeah. bro, just meeting you is just you you brought so much light to my day and it, you've brought so much light and so much energy. Just something to look forward to. So I'm like, I'll wake up the next morning, I'll just like I'm just pushing harder than ever because I'm just like, if Jacob can make a song like Pain, what else can I do? I'm working on a studio record. I'm like, dang, I need to do it just like Pain. <laughs> the mixing, the engineering, the whole thing, the producing aspect, everything. I mean, you do it all, man. And speaking of Pain, let's just talk about that right now. Let's talk about your latest release. And, I, and again, this is really an incredible release, Pain. What was the idea behind this? Um, I sat there. I was really pretty sad in the moment. I just got into like a, I've been go like, I went through a whole bunch of stuff and I got in a few fights and like, I was alone and I was desperate and I honestly just didn't know how to feel. And I just sat there and I listened and I kept listening over and over again. And the more I would type and tell to myself, the more better I'd feel. So by the time I hit the end of the song, like when I was saying like, uh, it's a lot easier to hate you when I don't love you. It's just like, it meant something like it was everything that I wrote in that song. Just, I don't know. It was crazy times back then. Everything that I've been through is such a pain and pain in my butt. You know, I just can't even handle it sometimes. So that's where pain came from. Just dark, dark moments. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. It's such a st- incredible. It's literally, it's a story that needs to be told. Don't, Dude, don't even, don't ever feel ashamed to tell your story. You got an incredible story. You got an incredible sound. Oh, my gosh. This is Jacob Edie right now talking to me right now, <laughs> talking about pain. I was listening to, I have your song on repeat. I have another, like, laptop down there listening to your song. I'm just like, oh, my gosh, this is this guy. We've all been through hard times, and that's yeah. what makes me feel better about it. Because I've had a lot of friends tell me, like, dude, this, like, feels good. Like, it makes me feel good listening to it. It is sad. But when you're sad listening to a sad song and you connect on an emotional level, it, it helps hit, you. Like, yeah. you're not the only one. It's different. It hits different, really, for real. I mean, it means different when you're actually actually going through it. Yeah. Jacob E.D., everybody. <laughs> Jacob E.D. Don't even. This is, I don't know. Can we play again? Do we have, do we have time for it? <laughs> My gosh, I got a little bit of time. Do we even have time? I'm like, I, I want like, I, I just want to keep talking to you. I'm just like, bro, you're just like, ah, I'm just like, gosh, bro. Okay. Uh, if I, I feel like I'm being honest with you. Like I used to live in a, well, like my dad's a good person, but I used to live in a really good home and my mom and my stepdad went on drugs. And that's honestly how the music started. Like after they went on drugs and I got evicted and I was like homeless, my brother Emmanuel moved. My sister moved. We're all in like different areas scattered. That's when I needed something else. I used to play basketball all the time. I was like fifth best in the region in Arizona. And when I lost it all and I couldn't do anything anymore, I had to get away and start something new. And this really helps me. Like every day, I don't listen to myself every day, but like that just sounds a little bit conceited. Nah, don't. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, 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 no. Look, <laughs> you, 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 you're, you're, you're your own person. I, I I know we're we're I know we're running we're running out of time, but I'm just like, oh, it's this my, is my bad. you're like I'm like oh no don't do you wait you said you're don't don't I don't want you to put dude I love this I really do love this I I love I 
Dude, you don't know how much this is like meaning to me right now. I do I do so much of this show and I do so much networking and just coming across you has made this whole show it, like it makes me look at everything different when it comes to just how you give off the light to people and how how you spread, you know, that ki- you know, kindness and realness as well. I mean, he talks about realness in his music. But to show it, I mean, it's different. It's just on a different level. Actions speak louder than words. We say that, but it's like, gosh, like, gosh, man, just it's, <laughs> it's you. I, thanks, dude. My God, this is uh, you're my best friend now. Just <laughs> I like, don't even <laughs> do. But th- thanks for stopping by the show. Thanks for like letting me waste your time. I literally have been just so. I yeah, I, no I I am I am so <sighs> I don't know. I'm honored, honestly. I no. am like me personally. I'm honored I, to be on this. Am, like it's. Amazing. I don't know. He said he did a background check on me. I said what? Or he checked me out, but I was <laughs> like, huh? What did he do? Because I'm like, you check me out. I'm like, I don't know what's the first video you clicked on because a lot of them are horrible to me. And I'm like, what you do? I it's, it's just beyond beyond measures and however ever however way you go from here just know the guy that entered you first is rooting for your rise even if i say yeah bro don't <laughs> don't ever feel afraid to just just holler if i beat at you at me. the top I'll, sp- I'll just i'll be like yeah he's the first guy <laughs> 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 I'm like, can I have a plug? I need a plug. <laughs> nah, just give me the plug, man. We'll, f- we'll be fine. I'll treat you to some fried chicken, all right? That good chicken. <laughs> all right. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, man. You're good. You're good. Nah, I'm going to get you that fried chicken. All right. Thanks for <laughs> what I'm supposed to say. Uh, pain is available now. Jacob E.D., everybody. Stick around. There's more of their do so after this. That's all the time that we have for today. If you would like to view clips from today's show, head on over to my YouTube channel for more exclusive content. And if you want to stream full episodes of this show, you can. Since this show is on all streaming platforms, which are all available to download on the Google Play Store and App Store. And finally, make sure to turn into The Adu Show. Only on YouTube.com and on all other streaming platforms available. Yo, Ethan. Thank yeah. you, man. Thank no you problem. for stopping by. Thank you for letting me waste your time. <laughs> no problem. I don't like you anyway. I love you. Let's go, baby. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Thanks to my guest co-host, Ethan Pierce. And thank you to my guest appearance, Jacob Edie. Stay cool. Live life. Until next time. <laughs>